Hi everyone, I am in beautiful sunny San Diego, California and I'm here with Jackie Birdsall. She is the Senior Engineering Manager at Toyota Motor North America and she is the woman behind this vehicle, the Toyota Mirai. <laughs> this is a fuel cell vehicle. How important is this Mirai to the Toyota lineup? It's incredibly important. So as you mentioned, it's a fuel cell vehicle, but it's all electric. Instead of plugging in and recharging it, we refill it. It takes about five minutes to refill with hydrogen. And this vehicle goes 402 miles or 647 kilometers on a fill. And uh, it's part of our electrified portfolio, which includes plug-in hybrids, hybrids, battery electrics, and fuel cell electrics, so that we can give the customer the choice to pick a vehicle that best suits their lifestyle, but also helps us to decarbonize transportation. Well, that makes sense because uh, like you say, you're the only manufacturer that has covered everything, fuel cells, plug-in hybrids, um, and conventional hybrids, and now your own first battery electric vehicle as well. That's so right. yeah. this is the point to really make it clear that, you know, it's not just a matter of we're just throwing all our eggs in different baskets, but we <laughs> have a plan. Absolutely. Yep. Mm. Now this one has been redone. This is a second generation of the Mirai. It's grown longer, taller, wider, and the fuel cell stack has moved. That's and right. And it's become bigger. So tell us a little bit about that. So yeah, we've actually um, moved to a more luxurious type platform. The fuel cell has moved from underneath the seats of the vehicle to underneath the hood. So we can take a look here. Here's the actual fuel cell stack itself down underneath here along with the um, power control unit, which tells the electrons where to flow. If you you know, are stepping on, on the accelerator pedal, it'll go straight to the motor. This is a rear wheel drive vehicle, Ooh. which really gives it a nice uh, drivability, a really premium feel when you drive it. It's quiet, it's quick, uh, it, it, it's an electric vehicle. So it has that electric motor instead of the clunky transmission, right? So and it's it a really- And it feels like a gas powered Camry though. If it's meant to be, kind of remarkably unremarkable in that it, it drives like a traditional vehicle. It feels like a traditional vehicle. It's meant to completely replace a conventional vehicle as far as the customer knows. However, it is zero emission. And there are hydrogen fuel cell tanks that are stored on board, there three are. of them. Yep, you know yep. what? I mean, people get concerned about this. There are safety concerns. What have you done to, to test this out? <laughs> yeah, so I mean, and it's a valid concern when people think hydrogen, uh, you know, they, they think of, uh, you know, a scary volatile molecule, right? But we've used hydrogen safely in industrial commercial processes for over 50 years. So we know how to handle it. We know how to store it. This particular vehicle has hydrogen stored at 70 megapascal or 10,000 PSI, and it's in um, pressure vessels that are wrapped in carbon fiber to get it, give it a real strength, right? So they're incredibly strong. And what we do is that we test these tanks to ensure their integrity throughout the lifetime of the vehicle. It's actually a requirement per regulation. It's called the Global Technical Regulation, and includes all kinds of stuff like dropping the tanks, um, cutting uh, you know flaws into the tanks, pressure cycling them, putting them on a bonfire, right? So we actually get to have kind of a lot of myth, myth busters type fun with these tanks. Shooting at them too, we right? Shoot, yes, also shoot, <laughs> shooting a gun at them. Yeah, so I mean, it, and it's all the requirement in the regulation is that the tank can leak, but it cannot burst, right? Mm -hmm. And it can only leak in an extreme situation. So it's essentially the strongest part of the car. You can imagine like putting a rock in a, in a soda can or in a pop can and crushing that pop can around that rock. That's kind of like what these tanks are in a crash test. These tanks are incredibly strong and that's meant to with, withstand all that pressure. And is that testing done in Canada as well? Yeah, a lot of that testing is actually done in British Columbia. So British Columbia has a long history of being a leader in hydrogen and fuel cell technology, and it continues to be when it comes to the high pressure system. Okay. Now, when it comes to fueling up, you know, what do you do? How do you fill up? <laughs> uh, how long does it take? I mean, there's certainly some advantages um, over this versus a full battery electric vehicle. Yeah. So the the, the the Mirai is meant to be kind of competitive with a conventional vehicle in the way that the customer uses it, which means the filling process as well. So right now they'll go up to a hydrogen dispenser, which here in California are co-located at traditional gasoline stations. So you'll have gasoline dispenser, gasoline dispenser, hydrogen dispenser. And then the customer comes up, they open the fuel door, uh, they attach the nozzle from the station onto the receptacle of the vehicle. It takes about five minutes to refill and then they pull the nozzle off, put it back on the dispenser and drive away again with another you know, uh, 
647 kilometers of range. Now there are issues though, and you know in Canada we only have I think what five <laughs> I believe five stations, stations. Yes, yes, that's it. Yes, yes. And there's certainly long waiting times for these um, stations as well. What needs to be done? To that's a improve. great question. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, the vehicles are here. The customers love the vehicles. Really, the gating item is the hydrogen dispensers themselves. And so what we need to do is invest in placing those hydrogen dispensers and not just one at a fueling location. We need to have several fueling locations so that customers aren't stuck in these long queues because it doesn't matter if it only takes you five minutes to refill if you're car number eight in line. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you're going to be waiting at the station for a while. So really it's about ensuring that if there's any zero emission vehicle um, infrastructure funding available by the government, that there's parity between the amount that's allocated for charging infrastructure and for hydrogen infrastructure. And this is particularly important for our customers that live in apartment complexes or don't have the capability to charge at home. We really need to make sure that there's that equity for our customers to be able to go and refill quickly at a hydrogen station. That's great. Yeah, that makes sense. And this has a starting price around 55000 in Canada. I believe so. And <laughs> they're already on the road in BC and Quebec hopefully slowly coming to Ontario and other places as soon as the infrastructure improves. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes. But it's a nice little package, drives very well, feels very comfortable, feels like a gas powered vehicle. Like I say, it feels like a Camry. It has the space inside mm -hmm. uh, and a really nice driving dynamics too. It's a, a nice little package. Yeah, I love to drive it. <laughs> <laughs> Just need to get the infrastructure in place. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Jackie. Thank you for watching.